In this lecture, you will learn about input groups. With input groups, we can add text, checkboxes, radio buttons, buttons, button groups, and dropdowns on either side of text input elements. Here we see an overview of the input group. First, we have examples with text. We have the text before the input, after, and both before and after. Then we have the text with other form controls. Here we have a text area, select, and a file upload, all with text in front of them. Then we have an input group with a label above it. And then we see how we can size the input group in three different sizes, small, default, and large. Then we have an example of input group with checks. So we see we have a checkbox and the radio in front of our input. Then we have a version with multiple inputs. We see we have one text here next to two inputs. Then we have an example with multiple text add-ons. So we have three before our input and three after our input. Then we see two examples with buttons. First one, we have the button in front of our input and then the button behind our input. And finally, we have a drop-down together with our input and a drop-down with a split button. All right, so let's see how we create all of this. So we go into our code editor and we start with looking at texts together with our input. So first we must add a div tag with the class input group. Inside of this, we'll now add a span tag with the class input group text. And we'll give this the ID before. We'll refer to this in a moment. Then we add the hash symbol as our text content. And then we add an input with the type text and the class form control. We'll give it the placeholder with the value hashtag, then the area label attribute with the value hashtag, and the area described by attribute with the value before. So that value before is referring to the ID here, since the input is, is described by the input group text. Now we'll create another example where the input will, where the text will go behind or after the input. So we add a div tag with the class input group. And then now first we add our input tag with the type text, class form control the placeholder, the value username, then the area label with the username again, and the area described by attribute the value after. After this, we'll create a span tag with the class input, input group text. We'll give it the ID after which we are used, used right up here. And then the text will be at example.com. Now we'll create the next example with text both before and after our input. So we start with a David tag with the class input group again. And then before we have the span class input group text. We add the dollar sign, then we add our input with the type text, class form control, the area, area label attribute like so, and I'll give it the value amount to nearest dollar. And then one more span tag with the class input group text and dot zero zero. Now let's save this, go back into our browser, refresh, or I mean select the screencast tab. And here we see our first three examples where we have text before, after, and before and after our input. Now let's see how we can create an input group with text and other form controls. So we'll go back here and scroll a bit down First, we'll create an input group with a text area. So we add a div tag with the class input group. 
Inside of this, we'll first add a span tag with the class input group text. And we'll give the ID text area and the text message. Then we'll add our text area element with the class form control and the placeholder. Write your message here. The area label attribute with the value message and the area described by attribute with the value text area. And then remember to close the text area tag again and leave it empty. Now let's create the select version with the div tag with the class input group as our parent element. Inside of this, I'll add a span with the class input group text. And the ID will be select. And we'll add the text select option. Then we'll add our select here with the class form select, the area label, default selects, and the area described by attribute the value select, the ID we just used. Inside of this, we can now create some options. First one will get the value one and the text option one. Let's just duplicate this a few times and update the values to two, three, four, and five, and the text to two, three, four, and five, like so. You can learn more about how to create selects in another lecture. Let's take a look at now how to create the file input inside of an input group. You can also learn more about how to create this file input in another lecture. But first of all, we need the wrapping div element with the class input group. And inside of this, we'll add the span tag with the class input group text. And the ID will be file. And the text will be upload. Then we'll create the actual file input by using a div tag with the class form file. Inside of this, we'll add our input with the type file and the class form file input. The ID will be input file. We'll use that in a moment. And the area described by attribute with the value file. Now after this, we'll add a label tag with the class form file label and the for attribute with the value input file, which we we're just creating right there. Inside of this label, we'll add a span element with the class form file text and the value choose file. And then we'll add another span tag with the class form file button and the text browse. Now let's save this and view these three examples here. First we have the text area, then we have the select, and finally we have the file upload together with the text on the left side inside an input group. Now let's see how we can add a label to an input group. For this example, we'll use the input group we created first up here. We'll scroll back down and now we'll paste it in. Then we'll add a label in front of our input group. So we add a label tag the for attribute with the value label and the class form label. Then we add the text input group label. Now we'll rename this ID of the input group text to label text and the value of the area described by to label text. And now since we're using a label for this input here with the for attribute with the value label, we'll also add an ID here with the value label. Let's take a quick look in the browser or we'll refresh and here we see it. Next up, let's look at how we can size our input group.
So back here in our code editor, we'll scroll up and copy our first input group again. Then we'll scroll down and paste it in three times. For the first one, we'll change the ID and area described by attribute to small. And in the next one, we'll change it to default. And in the third one, we'll change the values to large. Now to make this a small input group, we add the class input group SM. The default value will just have the input group as we already know, and the large variation will have the input group LG as well. Let's say, go back and refresh. Here we see the three different sizes. Now let's see how we can create checkbox and radio buttons within an input group. So we'll scroll a bit down here in our code editor and first we'll see an example with a checkbox. We start by adding the div tag with the class input group. Inside of this, we'll add the span tag with the class input group text. And inside of this, we'll now create our text box. So we add an input with the type checkbox and the class form check input and the area label checkbox for text input. Then after this, we'll add our regular input with the type text, class form control, and the placeholder text input with checkbox. We we'll also give it the area label attribute with the value text input with checkbox. Now we'll copy and paste this down here. Then we'll change the type to radio. We'll keep this class here. We'll update this to radio button for text input. And update this to text input with radio button and the area label attribute, text input with radio button. Now let's save this, go back and refresh. And here we see the checkbox and the radio button. Next up, we'll take a look at how to use multiple inputs and multiple texts. So first, the multiple inputs. We'll add the div tag with the class input group. Like so. And then we'll add our span, the class input group text, we'll give it the text first and last name. Then we'll create multiple inputs, so in this example, two inputs. We'll add an input with the type text and the class form control and the area label first name. Then we'll copy and paste this, change this value here to last name. Now We'll make the next example before we preview this in the browser. So, so this is multiple texts for an input group. So we add a div tag with the class input group. Inside of this, we add a span tag with the class input group text. And then we'll simply give it the number one. And we'll copy and paste this two times, change the number to two and three. And then we'll add our input, with the type text, class from control and the area label multiple text. Now let's copy and paste all of this code down here. In the first example, we had our input group texts in front of our input. Now we'll have them behind. So we'll simply change the order here. So in the input is the first one. Let's save and go back and refresh. Here we see the example with multiple inputs and the example with multiple texts before and after. Now let's look at how we can use button inside of an input group. So we'll go back here and scroll a bit down. First we'll create an input group with a button before our input. We we'll start off with creating a div tag with the class input group. Inside of this we'll now add a button with the type button and we'll give it the classes BTN and BTN secondary to give it the secondary gray color. Then we'll add the text search. Then create an input with the type text 
and the class form control. We'll give it the placeholder, the value search text here, and the area label attribute with the value text input with button. Now let's copy this code and paste it in here. And now we want the button after our input, so we simply move it one line down, like so. Let's save, go back and refresh. And here we see our two inputs, first with the button in front of the input, and then with the button after our input. Next up is two input groups with a drop-down and drop-down split button in front of the input. So first, or we'll add the div tag again with the class input group. Inside of this, we add the button with the type button and the classes btn, btn secondary, and drop down toggle. Then we'll give this the ID drop down and the data bs toggle attribute with the value drop down. After this, we add the area has pop up attribute with the value true and the area expanded attribute with the value false. Then we add the text topic and close our button tag again. Now we're creating the drop down menu using a div tag with the class drop down menu, like so. And the area labeled by attribute with the value drop down, which refers to this ID up here. Inside of this, we add an A tag with an empty href attribute and the class drop down item. This will get the text first item and remember to close the A tag. Let's duplicate this a few times and update the text to second item and third item. After this drop down menu, we add our input with the type text, the class form control. We we'll have the placeholder attribute with the value search text here and the area label attribute with the value text input with drop down. Now we'll also create the drop down split button variation before we preview this in the browser. So to do this, we we'll simply copy all of this input group code here. Now we can see that I'm missing this closing Dave tag here for the input group. So let's add that. And now let's copy all of this code here and paste it in. Now, first we want to update the value of the ID and the area labeled by attribute to be drop down split. So they won't conflict. Then we need to add another button with the type button and the classes btn and btn secondary. We'll add the text topic for this button. And now we need to edit this toggle button here. We need to add one more class, drop down toggle split for this. And then we need to hide this text here. We'll actually also change it to toggle drop down and make it visible only for screen readers by wrapping it in a class a span tag with the class visually hidden. It will now be hidden for screens, but visible for screen readers. So here we can see that the text is now wrapped in this span tag. Let's save this, go back and refresh. And now we have our input group with the drop down in front of the input and with the drop down split button. So we click this split to open up the drop down menu. So this was all about how to use the input group.